Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and behind me is the fallout shelter that I'm starting to finish up right now. Yesterday I finished getting an extra couple of feet of dirt on the top of it, pressure tested the sink that we have in there, doing all the last minute kind of stuff to get it ready if we ever had to use it. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video today is what are the chances that we're actually going to have to use this thing? Well, to answer that question you have to answer another question. What are the chances that there's going to be a major escalation in the war between the East and the West, between Russia and NATO and the United States? Uh, for the past few months, I've been kind of, you know, waffly on it. I don't honestly know. I mean, you, nobody has a crystal ball, and it's hard to really tell the future. But in the last week or so, I feel like my sense of it is really starting to firm up. And at this point, I feel like I'm at a point where I feel like I can call it and say, I, I honestly think that it's going to happen, that we're going to have a major escalation, and we're going to see Russia at war, at least in some sort of intensely proxy sort of way, which could easily uh, spiral out of control, not that war doesn't start out of control to begin with, uh, in into a full-fledged war. Uh, the reasons for that are, uh, you know, well, there's a couple of them. One, uh, just to you know, be brief with it, I know I don't tend to be really great at that on my channel, uh, but the powers that be, the people that get to decide whether or not uh, you know, the United States gets into a war or doesn't get into a war, uh, have a lot to gain from us doing it. Uh, the economy is really soft at the moment, there's all sorts of social issues, there's all sorts of, well, I, the, the situation in the United States in, in the United States is rife with issues at the moment, and a war is it's a wonderful distraction from those things, or at least that's the way a lot of people in power tend to see it. So there is a lot of incentive for us to get into war. Not to mention we've got midterm elections coming up, and you know whatever problematic wiring is going on up in the human brain. Uh, when humans are at war, no matter what our leaders are like or what you know who they were or whatever, we tend to have this automatic you know, brain chemistry sort of uh, situation where it gets us to rally behind them. It's idiotic, but humans do it and leaders know that. So we've got that situation. On top of that, there's a whole other la layer to this, and that is what is the public sentiment on this. And that public sentiment is largely being driven not by people independently thinking about things, but what media is telling people to think. And I can see the writing on the wall in the media. There is a real drumbeat to this. Uh, all the classic sorts of uh, messaging is out there in terms of uh, you know trying to get people to think that you know, the, the leader of this country is the worst person that's ever existed. Uh, it'd be incredibly easy to go in there and uh, you know wrap things up in just a couple of weeks. That's not that's not being overtly said, but the, the sort of. Uh, uh, the covert message in all of this is, you know, you, you, know, you hear the messages about how uh, Russia is bumbling through this. They, they expected, you know, who knows what they expected, but, you know, we know that they expected to be done in like eight and a half minutes. They're going to roll in and like, they'll roll in on a, a Tuesday morning and by, you know, Tuesday afternoon, the whole country's taken over. But that didn't happen. You know, Russia is so bumbling and, you know, idiotic. You know, if the United States just went in there, we could totally take care of the situation. Uh, you know, just like all these other wars that we've, uh, you know, had over the past uh, couple decades. It, you know, there's supposed to be a cakewalk, and then 20 years later, uh, you know, you uh, kind of bumble out of there, and then the whole situation goes back to the way it was, uh, you know, when you went in initially. The media is definitely behind this. The American public looks like they're definitely behind this. Um, and, you know, I don't want uh, to give... You know, the fact that I obviously think this is a bad idea, I don't want that to be confused with the idea that I think that Vladimir Putin and, you know, the... Uh, 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 the power structure in Russia is a good thing at all. I mean, I think it's, it's horrible, and I think it's terrible when one country goes in and just invades another. You know, Ukraine isn't some poster child for, you know, a wonderful organization, uh, you know, that is a country. I mean, there's all sorts of cor uh, corruption issues that were there. There's all, all sorts of problems. But, you know, that said, it's still not cool when one country goes in and attacks another and starts killing people. That sucks. It's awful, and I wish it weren't happening. The solution to that isn't always war, though, and... Nobody seems to know that. <laughs> uh, so I think we're going to be at war with Russia within the next, you know, if not the next couple of weeks, I think certainly within, I, I don't think it's necessarily within the next couple of weeks, but I think within the next couple of months, at some point in the spring, certainly at some point in the summer, I think that there's going to be some sort of, you know, open-ish battle going on between the United States, NATO, and Russia. So what do we do about that? This channel isn't just about doom and gloom and talking about, you know, that I think negative things are going to happen. Uh, and you guys know, if you watch my channel a lot, I, I don't tend to make calls on things. Uh, but when I do, I think 100% of the time they happen. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I 
I'm usually kind of cagey about like actually predicting. Uh, you know, I know that aliens that someday are going to invade by air dropping bird flu infected clown zombies, but outside of that, I don't have a crystal ball. And you know, you just prepare for different possibilities. But you know, uh, so occasionally things get to the point where it's like, yeah, I think this is really going to happen. And you know, again, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know that when I make a call. I don't think it's ever not happened. So, what do we do about this? We don't just, you know, you know, stew in it and say, "Oh, this is so horrible," you know, whatever. Uh, you know, what do we do about it? Because prepping and preparedness is all about, you know, looking at what the future is going to be and preparing for it. Sometimes the future is going to be awesome, and it's easy to prepare for those things. Uh, but you know, here we focus on the things that are a little more challenging. Uh, well, the way that you prepare for that is to, you know, get ready to kind of be on your own. If uh, there is a major war, we haven't had here in the United States a major war, and you know essentially any of our lifetimes. I know some people are old enough to have been, uh, you know, alive when there was another kind of war between two superpowers, uh, but, you know, the vast majority of us, uh, you know, are not that old, and we don't really know what it's like. What we're going to be seeing, and I know this from history books, not from having personally gone through it myself, what we're going to be seeing is, uh, you know, intense supply shortages, the cost of everything going up, uh, you know, rationing going on, uh, and possibly, you know, our kids being conscripted uh, into this meat grinder. So how do you prep for all that kind of stuff? Well, you know, the supply stuff is kind of academic. You, you get it when it's easier to get. And I know I've been saying that on my channel forever, and I know that the pushback I always get on that is, you know, people will always say, well, it's, you know, it's easy for you to say. It's not easy for me to say. Uh, but, you know, they'll say, it's easy for you to say, but, you know, I just don't have that extra disposable income. I don't have that 10%, you know, to every month I could, you know, take 10% of my uh, income and put it towards preps for the future. Well, we've seen food go up 10%, 20%, at least 30%, you know, pretty much across the board. Some of it's pushing 40 or 50% in the past year, and people are still getting food. Well, how do they do that? How do they accomplish that thing, you know, having that extra 20, 10, 20, 30, 40% uh, to spend on food that they said was impossible? Uh, well, what they ended up doing was that they bought stuff that was cheaper. They, uh, you know, cut back on certain things, you know, things that were more expensive, like certain, you know, meats. And, and whatnot, you know, people cut back on that and they bought stuff that was cheaper so that they could get their grocery bill to stretch over those 10, 20, 30 percent price increases. Uh, had they done that all those years prior when they said that it was impossible and that couldn't have happened and, you know, there's just, there was no way for them to, you know, make their budget stretch any further, had they done that for years prior, they'd have a pretty darn awesome uh, prepper pantry right now. That's, uh, you know, hindsight's 2020. Uh, of course, you didn't need to have hindsight. I was telling people <laughs> for a while that, that all these things are possible. Uh, you know, you just, you just pull back a little bit and that will give you that extra padding. But uh, now that all of us have seen that firsthand, that that is possible, we can still do that right now. And I know that the prices already have gone up that 10, 20, 30 percent, but they're going to continue to go up. And if you imagine that right now you're in the position that you were a couple of years ago when you said that this wasn't possible, and knowing that this is the trajectory that we're headed for into the future, you have the opportunity right now, and I know it sucks that you're doing it now when things are, you know, already in price inflated. It would have been better if you'd you know, done it before back when you said that it was impossible. But if you do it now, you're going to give yourself that 10 percent, 20 percent padding for the future when the prices do start going up. And I think we're going to see the price increases going up pretty dramatically, pretty, pretty quickly, uh, you know, in the very near future. So the time to do this is right now. And the way that you do it, again, is the way that you guys figured out how to do it on your own. It's that, you know, you, instead of buying the name brand that you like, you buy, you know, the generic brand. And because you can get, uh, you know, 12 cans of that uh, for X number of dollars instead of 10 cans uh, of that for X number of dollars. You buy the 12 cans and you have those two extra cans that you didn't necessarily need and you put those away. Do that as much as you can now and adapt your diet in ways that are going to allow you to maximize that. I know people say that they're addicted to meat. I myself, I'm mostly vegetarian. I do have some kind of meat in my diet. I do like, you know, small oily fish like sardines. Sometimes I'll do sa salmon here and there, maybe like once or twice a month. Um, and occasionally I'll have a, a little bit of bird in my diet, but I'm mostly a vegetarian. Uh, I have a mostly vegetarian diet, and that saves me a shitload of money. Not, it, to, you know, to put it bluntly, uh, you know, a lot of people associate you know vegetarianism. It's like with you know this uh, lofty kind of uh, you know save the world kind of thing, and you know you know eat, have a smaller carbon footprint and all that. But it's also a great way to save money and not buy you know buying you know some sort of like weird prepared tofu kind of meal that's like it simulates like you're eating meat. I mean like regular vegetarian food, beans, uh, you know legumes, th uh, things like that. You know you can get. 
pounds and pounds and pounds of that stuff for pennies on the dollar that you'd be spending if you were getting a bunch of meat. And yeah, again, I know a lot of people are addicted to meat, uh, and I don't, I don't say that lightly. I mean that I know that there is a, a chemical um, imbalance that's created in people's brains when they uh, intensely change their diet. And you know, suck it up and get over it. And if you want to feed, be able to feed your family, start opening your uh, mind to some of these creative ways of doing it, uh, because. Yeah, I, I know it, it sucks to change things and it sucks to bring a little bit of that discomfort that's coming to us from the future into your today because today we can keep kicking that can down the road, uh, road a little bit for ourselves. Today, we don't, we're not forced to make this decision today, but if you make these decisions today and you take that intense uh, pain that you would be uh, feeling in the future if you don't make any changes right now and you, ta and you take a little hit of it today and a little hit of it tomorrow and a little hit of it the day after that, you spread it out and you really uh, you, um, you blunt the shock of having to deal with it all at once and you put yourself in a better place for that future because you were, uh, you're taking that, well it's like you're driving down a car, uh, a road, you're not driving down a car, you're driving in a car down a road and uh, you know there's a brick wall up ahead of you. If you take that brick wall and you start taking bricks off of it and you're laying them in the road ahead of you, now maybe bricks aren't the best, let's say it's, like, it's a clay brick uh, a clay brick wall so you can kind of like mush the thing down a little bit. You start taking clods of that and instead of just ramming into this wall of clay way up the road, if you break that apart and you get it in the road uh, ahead of you, you're going to start, you know, we're having a bumpy ride, you're going over some of these clay uh, lumps, uh, but you're, you're getting some ele elevation, so instead of just smashing face first into that thing, you are working on getting up and over it ahead of time. Sure, if you just didn't do that at all, you'd have easy sailing for, you know, the, you know, the foreseeable future because you can just kind of uh, go on that nice smooth road, but if you take some of that, that um, that pain and you spread it down the road ahead of you, once you get to the point where that, that wall was, you're not going to smash into it because you would have uh, done some of the work ahead of time. I don't need to explain the metaphor anymore. You guys get it. You know what I'm talking about. Take some of that pain out of the future and bring it to today and, and start dealing with things ahead of time before you have to. That's the message for today. Start today. I'm making a call on this one. I think that the, the East and the West are definitely going to war on this. All the cards are aligning on it and the media is cheer, cheer, cheerleading for it. The public seems to want it. And that's the way it is. You know, it's not the future that I want to see, uh, but it's the future we're gonna get and that's the one that you have to deal with. So start dealing with it today and hey, if it doesn't happen, awesome. You, you created a great prepper pantry for yourself. You uh, got some practice in sacrifice and you know, uh, you know, doing with a little bit less, that's always a good thing. And uh, you know, and be happy that I was wrong about this one. I don't think I'm going to be, but I certainly hope that I am. That's it, thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.